Hello and welcome to another video. Um, as you can see, I've now got a fancy splash screen. It took me a while to actually figure it out, but now since I have vacation, I actually have time. And as you can see, we're going to do something cool today. We're going to do something different. We're going to go into Python, uh, Python, Maya, and Python uh, scripting. Um, it's a topic that has been uh, asked for quite a lot so I figured you know what let's just do it I've been learning Python for the last couple of days it's really not that difficult but it's a weird weird language if you come from any uh, language like C sharp or C++ it's a weird language but we're just gonna have to try it and we'll see so as I mentioned right we're gonna make a auto rigger which means that in Maya we're gonna make a tool that will create a rig for us so we don't have to do it over and over again we just create a simple tool that in a couple of clicks you can actually make your own rig at least that's the goal. It's probably going to be a long as series because there, there's a lot of coding involved and it's complicated to a certain extent. So we'll just dive into it. So this is Maya, right? So how do you get started with the Python script? Well, at the bottom right here, you can see there there's a script editor. There it is. This is the Maya script editor. And there's a thing called Mel here, and that's called uh, for a Mel script. And there's Python here that you can use. In this case, we're going to go for Python because, uh, in my opinion, it's a little bit easier to learn than. Mel. Mel is like a, a mashup between programming language like PHP and JavaScript all mashed together and it's awful. Um, it's yeah, I don't know why we use it when you have Python as well. So this is the uh, script editor that we're going to work in. This is Python. Now about Python. Python is different than anything than any other uh, language out there because it functions in a different way. For example, I'm going to do something real fast here. I'm going to create an if statement here if uh, blah equals blah. And then we have to do a uh, double point, double, I don't know what it's called. And then it actually, actually relies on a thing called the indentation to see where the loop or this if statement actually ends. So in this case, I could type here. I'm going to type uh, print and blah, 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 something. And anything I type on this line here will be inside the if statement. But if I add a line here, for example, I can say else then it is not part of the if statement anymore and the same goes for loops as well so for example what we can say for uh, i in range let's do like 0 and 10 for example everything inside this indentation will be executed in that for loop several times but anything outside like here for example again blah uh, is hoi for example then this doesn't get executed. So it's actually really important that you actually keep in mind the indentations in Python, otherwise you'll get weird stuff. And it took me a while to figure it out. I'm like, what, 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 why, why do you have to be so difficult? But it, uh, it's just different, right? It's just a little bit different. So let's just, let's just get, get started uh, a little bit easier, and then we'll just see how far we can, how far we can come. So the first thing we need to do though is we actually need to import the Maya commands, otherwise we can't do anything. For example, right now I can type sphere. And you can see that it turns this like this bluish color and then you can add brackets. Now when executed, it will not do anything because sphere is not defined, right? Because it doesn't know what we're talking about. So the first thing we need to do is, the, is import the actual Maya stuff into the script editor. We just say import and then Maya of Maya.cmds. And in this case, I'm going to call it as base, right? And what this means is that all the commands will be loaded in a thing called base. So now I can type, for example, the base dot sphere, and then it will actually function. So now I'm going to select it all, and hit on play, and we have sphere. Okay. So this base can be called anything. You can you can you can call this CMD or game or sub or baby. And if you have called it baby, then it needs to be baby dot sphere. It will still execute. And you still have a sphere. So this is more like a um, preference. I, I prefer base, but you can call anything you want, really. So it's, not, it's entirely up to you, right? So now we can actually access all the Maya stuff that we want to access. So let's just get started, right? So the first thing that, that we kind of want to do is create a, a window in Python. It's not as difficult as a sound. You just have to type, in this case, base again, on line one, that base, and then say base.window. Right, and if it if it turns uh, italic and bluish, then you're good. Then you can give a name. Um, double quotes or single quotes don't really matter. I just go for double quotes because I, yeah, because of C sharp, I can't help it. So I'm just gonna call it Auto Rigger. I'm gonna give it a name, 
and then you have a window, right? We can't use we can do anything with it yet because we have to show it. So we have to say base dot show window. There you go. So now when I execute this, we get a window. In my eyes, empty of course, but that that makes sense. But this is our created window, right? So first do actual window with the name, and then the actual execution of the window by saying base dot show window in order to make it. So let's just get started, right? So the first thing I want to do is create a little, a little bit of a layout. So I'm gonna say base dot uh, row column column layout. Again, it, it turns italic, so it's good. And then I'm gonna say NC is two, right? The NC is stands for a number of columns. So in this case, I create two columns. You can also do ten or fifteen or one or two, one million. Whatever makes you happy. So these tags here, this this is a little bit of um, like a like a mystery hunt. If they ex actually go through the API to actually find out what what they can do and what they can't do, it's a little, a little bit annoying. But it's just practice, right? It's like le learning every other language on there. It just takes time. So what I'm gonna what I want to do with this rigor is I first want to create uh, certain points. In, in the scene that we can adjust so the position of where the joint should be for example the shoulder and the elbow and the wrist etc and then once they are in a uh, uh, proper location then we say uh, then we have a button uh, called create rig that will make the, make the joints for us and then we, maybe we can hit uh, a second button that says create eye case and it creates rest for us so that's the goal right so First thing we're going to do is, is we're just going to create the actual dummies or um, locators for that. So I'm going to make a button that will create all the um, locators for us, and I'm going to create a button that will delete everything for us again, since it's a little bit easier. So I'm going to say again base dot and then button. Okay, and I'm going to say something weird. It's called L equals in this case the actual text. Create dummies, and let's just create locators a little bit sexier. So the L is for the text uh, that you can actually see in the window. Then the W is for the width of the button. So I'm gonna say like uh, as 200. And then you can actually uh, hook up a function to that button. So when you press it, it will call on that certain function. So by saying C equals or C for command, and then we say create locators. Keep in mind. That, that you actually need to add those brackets there, and then we're going to close the, the, the button as well. Same for the other one again, L for text is uh, delete locators. Again, W is for width, and C is for the actual command that will be delete locators. There we go. So, we're calling a function that doesn't exist yet, so I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it uh, below the base of show window. So actually here we start doing it. So I'm going to add a common line here. Let's say uh, actual code or something like that. Beautiful. Okay. So how do you call a function in, the, in Python? Well, you can't say function. It doesn't exist. What we're going to do is def def. Um, I don't know why, but I think they're just being special. So in this case, create locators. And then again, don't forget that one. And then again, we actually rely on the indentations to um, to, uh, to encapsulate the function itself. So anything with the indentation here will be part of that function. But if I add something here, it will be a separate function again. Yeah, it's a little bit annoying, but it just takes a little bit of time to get used to. Again, the delete locators, I'm going to hope. In this case, I fucked up the indentations. In this case, I'm going to call it delete test. There you go. I want to call this create test. So print is just like printing anything out. Now I'm going to set everything. So control A and then hit the SQ button. We now have two buttons here, create locators and delete locators. So in my window here, I'm going to click on this bad boy here, which will uh, make the uh, window clear again. Now we should create locators and then we should get a text here, create test and then delete test right so these functions are now actually executed now keep in mind if you don't have anything here I'll show you what happens you'll get an error right expected in indented indented block right so this is because you need to have something here otherwise it's not going to do anything so again i'm going to type it back create test 
Blue head, right? Awesome. It's a good start. So, what will be your next step? Well, since we're doing rigging, we need to be logical and be um, neat. So, so we need to, need to think of our hierarchy as well. So, the first thing I want to do is I want to create a base uh, group that has that has all the other um, locators in it. So, for a couple of reasons, a it looks better in your hierarchy, and the most important reason is so we can actually scale everything up by just um, scaling up the base group. So, how do you create a group? Well. In this case, you can say base dot group. I know it's amazing, but again, this doesn't work because um, then it's like I don't know what you're doing, but it's not anything in there. So, we, so we need to ex actually pass on some tags in here. So in this case, I'm going to say em, and then it's true. So em stands for empty. So we're going to make an empty group, and keep in mind that the true needs to be with a capital T. Unlike any other language out there, the true needs to be with a capital T. It's a little bit different, but yeah. Okay, then I'm going to add a comma, and then I'm going to say name, and then I'm going to say, uh, I don't know, uh, master locator. And actually, I'll go this like this, lock master. Like this. That's it, right? So in this case, we need to close it again, and then we have our first group. So let's test it out. Again, I'm going to select everything, Control A, hit play. Don't get any errors, it looks good. And then we're going to check out our hierarchy a little bit. I'm going to create locators, check out my hierarchy. And now I have an empty group called Lock Master. Absolutely brilliant. See, so far so good, right? So we just made our first empty group here. In this case, I also want to be able to delete them as well. So I'm going to close my window. Make sure that you close it every time you change something in your code. Close the window. Also, going to close the hierarchy a little bit easier. So, in my delete locators function, we're going to do some actual Maya programming now. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type notes, and this is just uh, an uh, an empty array. But the thing uh, with Python is that it uses a thing called a duck typing, duck as in as in quack quack duck. Um, you don't have to specify any type ever. Right, this this could be a number or a text. Python doesn't care. So, in this case, this can also be a list or an array or a dictionary, whatever you want. It can be anything you want as long as you put something in there. So, in this case, I'm going to say notes. So, in this case, or locks or locators or whatever you want to call it. Then I'm going to say again base, and then I'm going to go for my command, which is called ls, which is list selection. And then I want to go for all my objects with the uh, prefix lock, L-O-C, like this. And then underscore, and then I'm going to add the multiply mark, or the asterisk, which is a, um, uh, a, a wildcard. So everything after the underscore will be ignored. But everything, if, if an object has this, the lock, and then anything behind it, it will grab it in that list, which is the second one I want to need. Then I'm going to say base dot delete, and then I'm going to delete all the nodes that we have here. Let's test it, right? So we have, we have the outliner. I'm going to hit play. Now, in this case, when I create a locator again, you'll see that there are now two locators. Well, we're going to fix them a little bit. Then I'm going to delete them, and they're all gone. So again, you can add a million of them, and then delete locators. It'll delete all of them because it will look for the objects. Let's start with the prefix loc underscore and anything after that will just get thrown in the list and then in this case delete it. It's really easy, um, pretty sexy in my opinion. This um, whole card is a little bit easier than going through all the objects in the scene, like you have to do in Unity, for example. So, okay. So, what you also notice though is that we can have uh, more than one uh, locator mask, which is kind of weird. So, we kind of don't want to do that. So, we want to make sure that we only always have one. So, what you can do is to see if the objects actually exist and if it if it exists do nothing if it doesn't exist create an actual locator or that group in this case so I can say if base dot obj object exists and then for the actual name in this case lock master again don't forget that if it exists then we can say print uh, lock master already exists something like that then again, the indentation, make sure that you get that right, else we're actually going to make that group, right? So 
if I were to leave it, leave it like this, it will not work because this part here is actually uh, right beneath the else. So it doesn't see it as part of the actual if statement. But if I use indentation here, it'll tap. Then this part here is now, now part of the else. It's a little bit weird, but yeah. Okay. And then we can then we can continue on here, for example. Okay, so this is now outside the if statement here. I know it's a little bit weird, but yeah. Okay. So again, let's test it. See if our outline is empty. It should be. We can create, and if now it create, you see it here that it says that object exists, and then I can only have one of them, which is exactly what we want. It's perfect. Okay, so what do we do, right? So we now want to create the actual um, locators. So as usual with uh, rigging, you start at the actual actual root or the pelvis joint. And we're going to do the same thing for this one. So we're going to make a, a pelvis uh, locator that will be in the center of the, the character itself roughly. Um, and then we're going to add a top of that with, with the uh, spine and the arms and the legs, etc. So let's just start at the actual uh, pelvis. In this case, I'm going to call it root. So I'm going to say root equals and then base dot space locator, which is the function to make a, a locator in Maya. And I can say n. This is short for name. And then in this case, I'm going to call it n and we'll see on the score. And now I'm going to call it root with caps lock because that makes it true. That's it, right? So this is how you create an actual locator in Maya. Um, now I'm going to look for it though when I hit play. And I create it. It's right there, right? It's on zero, 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 zero. So I kind of want to move it as well. And I also know for a fact that it's really big. So I want to make sure that I'm working in meters. So again, it's in preferences, settings, set to meter. There we go. So our uh, locator right now is one meter. Or it's two meters by two meters, right? It's a little bit over the top. So I don't want to do that. So we're going to. Uh, scale it down a little bit, well, quite a lot actually. Um, it's not that difficult to do it. You could just say base dot scale, and then you can say, yeah, by how much do you want to scale it? So the actual uh, the vectors. In this case, I want to do by 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and then you have to the, then have to input the actual object that you want to scale. In this case, it's the root object or this locator. So now I want to check it again. I'm going to hit play make them and you see it's now tiny right so the scale is now actually 0 0.1 0 0.1 perfect so we now I also want to move it up so something like like a meter high like I don't know where but like here is for example it's it's almost the same thing in this case what you don't what you type here is called base.move which is which works the same way as the actual scale one so again First, have to say, okay, where do you want to move it? In this case, on x0, y1, z0, and then the object that you want to move, in this case, again, is the root. Now, again, I'm going to test it. I'm going to grab it all, hit play, locators, and then it's up there. Brilliant. Okay, so now I want to check my hierarchy. This object is, is not a child of the actual lo location or locator master, and, and I want it to be. So we get one object in our hierarchy. So I'm going to delete it, delete everything. So <coughs> how do you parent an object? Well, it's, again, it's the same thing. Almost the same thing. In this case, it's base.parent. And then it's child. So what is child object? In this case, it's going to be the root. And what, what is the parent object? And that's in this case, it's called lock underscore. Oh, let's use this be consistent master. So, first the child, and then the actual parent. I'm going to do the same thing here. Let's be consistent. There you go. Again, I'm going to test it. I'm going to create locators. I'm going to check my hierarchy. And you can now see it's now child of the actual. Uh, Okay, the master. Now the cool thing is now now being a child, you can just scale it up to any direction you want to, rotate it if you want to, etc. Which is the whole reason why we're actually doing this. The parenting part. Okay, so this is the the root. So I'm gonna call this uh, Dolphus function, and then we're gonna need a couple more. Let's be sexy. Like this. 
First, I'm going to save it though, so it's anywhere you want. In this case, let's just save it. I don't know where. I'm going to save it here. And call it Auto Rigger or whatever makes you happy. You can also see this now here. If you want to add a new script for this example as well, you can also click on the plus and then add a new Python script, for example, if you want to. I don't know why, but you could in some case, right? Okay. So we have the base part done. So we now have the group done and we now have the actual uh, pelvis done. So now we need to create the actual spine. And if you want, if you want, you can actually do this all in one function, but I'm going to split it up a little bit make a little bit more um, so, so we don't lose the overview in this case I'm gonna make a new function again def def then I'm gonna create the spine again there we go again if I if I were to leave it like this it will not run at all because it's you get a weird error saying that the indentation is not correct right you can see here so there needs to be something in a function when you make one which is fine which is perfectly fine okay in this case I'm gonna add print uh, spine there you go. So it would be kind of cool if you could actually input how many spines your character should have. Uh, in this case, for example, like four, five, whatever. So we're going to make a uh, integer field here that can actually input a value that can determine how many spines or certain spines there should be. So under our button, I'm going to say base dot in field, which is an integer field, and then you can add the values in here. If I, if I were to leave like this, it would probably work fine. You can see here, right? But you can input a ridiculous number. And I want, I kind of want to be, to be at, um, uh, I don't want to go overboard, so I want to have like between like four or two to ten spines possible. Um, so in here, you can say the minimum value. So the minimum value. In this case equals 1 for example that max value equals 10 and the actual uh, value that it has by default I'm going to say is 4 like this again I'm going to execute it and you can now see that you can only do 10 if it go higher like 12 it doesn't actually work anymore which is perfect exactly what we want to have but it would also be cool if you had like a label to it so I'm going to add a base.text um, in this case, you can actually add a text there, a label. So let's just call it um, spine count. And then you can also again add the label is spine count. There you go. Now you can see that we actually have text here, which is perfect. Okay. So what you can also do though, if you want to be like super hardcore, you can add like a, a base dot separate. A later, and then you can say height, for example, is something like that if you want. But in this case, I don't care because we're not at that stage yet. So we have a value here, so we can have like four or five to ten different spines. We're going to go back to here, and then we're going to make our first for loop, um, which is really not a difficult. In this case, it will be four um, x, or in this case, I'm going to call it i. In range and then the actual range from like zero to or minus to minus a million to a million whatever in this case I want to go for zero and then I want to use the actual value that, that I got from my integer field but then this is where it gets really weird in my opinion because um, because what would make sense if you, call, if you call this like spine count for example is right and then we can actually start using the spine count here just by typing this uh, spine count and then we can add some column here or a thingy, and then print uh, i, for example. This would make sense, right? But if you actually run this, you will probably get a big fat error, right? In this case, it doesn't because we didn't call the function yet. My bad. So in here, we currently type the create spy. There it is. There you go. Right, they all spawn here for some reason, right? Because you can say here more than one object, whatever. So you get this really weird thing happening here, which is kind of what I don't want to have. Um, so we're going to do it a little bit differently. Um, the way apparently it has to be done in um, in Python. Let's say delete all the locators for a second. If it's clear, perfect. There we go. 
Okay, so this is the other that I actually want to show you. So range, integer, and end argument, expected good unicode. The first time I had this, I'm like, yeah, sure. I don't know what that means. But what actually happens is that the spine count here is not an actual integer value. It's um, it's nothing in this case, uh, because we need to do it in a different way. So I'm going to throw this back here. What you need to do, and this is weird, you need to again call it an infield, like this. And then you can actually say, okay, which one? In this case, I'm going to add this one back again, spine count equals. And then you can say, okay, I want the energy field of the spine count, like so. So this is just a um, reference to this one over here. Then we say query is true. So it's the same, okay, we're hoping to get something from this object. In this case, we want the value to be true as well, like this. So the it's weird, right? So so again, we call the integer field, and then this is a, again a reference to the actual one that we made here. Then we say uh, query query is true. So Maya knows that that we're getting something from that integer field, and then the value as well. Let's let's just test it, right? There we go. One, two, three. 0 to 1. So this is perfect. This is exactly what we would expect. Oh, but this is how it's done. It's really weird, but sure, whatever, right? It's fine. So, what we could do now is we could just say, okay, we're going to make uh, a spine in this case. Spine or spine lock or whatever you want to call it. Again, then it's based on space locator. And then again, the name that you want to give it to it. And then in this case, I'm going to call it lock spine. And I kind of want to add the actual value to that spine number. So, so we get like spine 0, spine 1, spine 2, spine 3, etc. So we need to add a plus and then str, which is string, and then the value that you actually want to put into a string. In this case, the x or sorry, the i value. So we turn the integer value here, the i, into an actual. Um, text value that we can use in the actual name. So now we will get the lock spine 0 to 1 to 2 etc. Let's just test it. So well, you could probably already see it but we now have lock spine 0, 1, 2 and 3. Perfect, right? This is what you want to have. Again they're huge so again we're going to make them a little bit smaller. So we're going to say base dot scale again again 0 0.1 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 and then the object that you want to scale in this case again it's spine there we go now so now that this part where it gets interesting because you also want the spines to be the child of the actual uh, pelvis or in this case the root right um, so what we need to do well I'm going to show you what happens right so in this case I can say based on parent then you can say the child in this case it's the spine and then the and then the actual root would be the lock underscore root, like this. This will work fine, right? You think? Well, let's just test it out. Create it. And we have all the... Okay, it's visible. And there you go. So you can see, right? But this is not correct, because the spine 1 should be a child of, of spine 0. So it should be like this. And this like this, and this like this, right? This is, this is how you want to have it if you're doing actual rigging. So in this case, like so. This is how you want to have it, right? So in this case, what I did, it was it was just wrong. Well, it's not wrong, but it's not ideal, right? So in this case, we're going to do a little bit differently. So what I'm going to do is say if the i value is zero, so equals to zero. So the first spine to be to be created, that should be the child of the actual root in this case, like so. And if it's not, if it's anything else, else, then it should be the, the child of the object before it, if that makes sense. So we have spine, we can the object itself. Then we have the uh, lock spine, so the actual spine itself, underscore, and then again, the close string, then plus, and then again, str, the i minus one. Like this. 
So again, we just we just grab the i value. So in this case, it, first time it will be zero, so it just goes to this part over here. Then it's one, right? So the i turns to one, so it goes to here. And then the this the second spine is created will be the child of spine in this case zero, right? Because it's one minus one, and then you get the actual proper list. So let's test it out a little bit. Create them all again. Open it up, and I can see that they all are childs of the previous spine created. Which which one have? Perfect, right? Okay. So you may have also noticed that they're all in, in, in uh, on the same location. So we need to move them. In this case, we want to do it outside the actual if statement, but inside the for loop. So we need to be inside the indentation here. So I'm going to put it right there. Then we can again place and move it. So on the x location, it's going to be zero. Then on the y location, it's going to be a little bit more interesting. So in this case, well, I did some testing, but in this case, it should be 1.25 and then plus uh, 0.25 times i. And again, on the z, there's nothing, and the object that you want to move in this case is fine, like this. So why these values, right? Well, so the 1.25, that's because the spine. Uh, the pelvis starts at, at one meters or one unit up, so I kind of want to be this one a little bit higher than the actual pelvis, and then by every spine the height should increase by in this case 0 0.25. So you get this, right? So the, there's an actual even space between all the locations. So this is the root. Then you have spine one or spine zero, one, two, and three, like this. And now you, you can still see it. These are all still children of each other, and then again, if I grab the actual location master, I can still scale up, rotate it if I want to, and then it should in every direction that I want, which is check one one. Awesome, right? So, what would be the next step? Well, the next step would be to create an arm. Uh, so we're going to make a new function, and again, I'm going to call it def, def, in this case, create arms, like this. I'm going to add some text here so it doesn't crash for me. Right. Don't, don't forget to save location as well, <laughs> otherwise it would be kind of sad. So, what do you want to do? Well, the easy thing, right, you have two arms. Or maybe even four arms, so we need to be a little bit more... Well, we kind of need to be smart, right? So we can do a couple of things. We can, we can create all the arms, or we can make a group and then copy that group, right? Both ways are valid, and it's just what you prefer to do. In this case, I'm gonna go the hardcore method. I'm gonna create both arms, right? So how can we know which side we're, we're actually working on? Well, you can say here, for example, we can input a value called side that has to be passed on to the actual function. In this case, in my in my create spine function, I'm gonna outside my, my for loop. Over here, outside it, make sure you're outside that loop. You can say create arms, for example, and then one for the left side, and then minus one for the opposite side. Now, while, while why minus one? Well, you can just say, for example, you have x value of uh, one, right? So what you can do is that you um, multiply that value with the side in this case. So if it's multiplied by one, it's it's a positive number, so it goes to the left, and then if it's a negative number, it would go to the opposite side. So this is a way, you don't have to do it like this, but there are multiple ways, whatever, right? What makes you happy? So first thing I don't want to do though is again, again, is to make an actual group of all, all of the actual uh, arms in this case. So I want to create an arm group for both sides, so left arm and right arm. So I'm just going to check straight up, to see if these, these sides is equal to one. In this case, it is left. And if it's not, it's going to be right. Like this. Okay, so if side is one, so again we're gonna make first we're gonna check to see if the object exists. Well, it probably doesn't exist because we haven't made it yet. But if object exists, in this case, um, let's call this lock uh, left arm group like this. If it exists, do nothing. Print. I'm not doing anything. If it doesn't exist, else we're gonna make a group. So again, base dot group. What is the actual name of the uh, group? 
and it's empty or not so in this case em equals true so it's an empty group and the name I'm going to call this um, oh, l underscore oh this is the same as the other one so lock l arm group now in this case I don't even have to call it uh, loc in front of it because it, this is the object will be a child or something so and if that parent gets deleted of course so will the child as well so for my sanity sake I'm gonna call it just L arm group like this and I'll do the same thing here else if uh, based on OBJ exists then R arm group um, I'm still not doing anything. Still not doing anything. Else, again, based off group. EM empty is true. Name is R underscore R dot group. There we go. Brilliant, right? So we now have the left R group and right arm group done. So let's check it. Gonna create locators and then we should have two groups here as well. So left arm group and right arm group. Now again they're not actually um gelled yet or parent to but that's gonna be the next step. I'm gonna delete everything again and then we're gonna parent them to the actual spine or the the upper spine in this case spine four probably so and here I'm gonna say based off parent this one, right? Um, and now we're going to do a simple trick. Again, first we're going to do the L arm group, so the object that you want to uh, parent to something, the, in this case a child. And then I'm going to do the same thing as I did here. But then I'm going to go for the in field, uh, spine count. Again, query is true, the value is true. But, right, um, this value is always one higher than it should be because we start going from zero, right, in the folder we start going from zero. So it's from zero, in this case, if you input five in the actual value here, the highest value you see in Maya is four, right? So, so we need to make sure that we actually do minus one, otherwise it will do some weird stuff. And same thing for the other one as well. So I'm gonna go here. And it's tested. Create. Okay. Nothing happened. I have no idea why. I'm still always not doing anything. Because the groups are still there. My bad. I knew that, of course. <clears throat> Great. Okay, so this is almost done. Except for the L arm group is not defined. So I probably made a typo somewhere. Let's find out where I made that typo. Am I that blind? No. 54. Why? Well, that actually makes sense, right? This makes sense because the L arm doesn't exist. This one. So what we should do is create a variable here, arm in this case. Doesn't matter what you call it. So actually knows what we're actually doing to it, and then we're gonna say here arm as well. Same here, arm is base of group, and same here as well. Okay, let's test it. Create still doesn't do anything. Object three is invalid. Line fifty four. I have no idea why I'm doing this. That's weird. Oh, yeah, of course, that makes sense actually. <laughs> so, stupid, I'm sorry. So, this is just a value <laughs> that actually makes sense, right? It doesn't know okay, what kind of object we need to actually do it to. So, in this case, it will be lock spine underscore and then plus this. 
uh, and then we need to convert all of this to a string, like so. Okay. So it got lost, right? So this is just the value that we're actually getting uh, from, from Maya. So this will be like four or five. So and then we're saying, okay, uh, this arm should be parented to the number four. And Maya's like, I don't know what you're talking about. So we need to actually um, parent it to a, an actual object in Maya. So this case will be log spine underscore and then plus the value but since the value is an actual number it can't use it so we need to convert it into an actual string this case by typing str like so str and then we'll test it again and check out my hierarchy first there we go perfect right so now we've got both groups are children of the, the highest spine in this case Awesome. Those are just groups, right? So we also got, kind of want to move them to the actual uh, proper location where they should be. So I'm going to do the same thing here, and that'll be the, the move location, right? So based on move. In this case, it's on the uh, side, so on the x. So we're going to do like 0 0.35, and then multiplied by the side, the one that we were just talking about, multiplied by the side. Um, and then Let's see how high it should be now since our uh, spine height uh, can be changed we need to do some math again uh, so in this case the the first spine starts at one can say one sorry the, the root starts at one and then we're gonna do 0 0.25 same as the other one then times and then the actual value that we got from the uh, infield so again based on infield same thing Spine count query is true. We're asking a question. Value is true. And again, since we are since we start counting from zero, we need to deduct one of it. Uh, actually, no, we don't have to do that at all. Okay. And on the set value is zero, then the object that we actually want to move in this case would be L underscore arm. Let's count the actual brackets. I'm probably missing something, but I'm not sure. Yes, let's check it out. Okay, create. Got a big fat error, which means that, which usually means that I did a typo somewhere. On line 55, so uh, this bracket for that bracket is correct. That's not correct. We're missing one here, I think. Should be correct, I think. Let's check it out. The left group. Yep, there it is. It's up here. Perfect. And then we can copy paste the actual value or the, the, the line of code. We could just copy paste it perfectly. We don't have to change anything. So, in this case, based on move. The only thing that I have to change is the actual object. In this case, that will be R underscore arm and not the left arm. Arm. Let's check it out. It actually works properly. Yep, there it is. So this is just the groups, right? Then we also need to, to create the actual locators. There we go. Um, it's the same thing as we've done before, right? So in this case, I'm going to do is first in the spot over here so we're gonna make a space locator um, let's just do it in the else if that would make sense um, so again based on space locator same thing uh, dot space locator like this um, and then the, the name of the value of the name of the locator would be in this case LOC because, because we are making a locator an L upper arm or shoulder or whatever makes you have, right? like this. Okay. So this is the arm. I uh, have a comment here arm. Then we also need the elbow, etc. But let's first do the arm. So let's just call this shoulder or upper arm because we need to pair this. So again, based on parent, 
uh, what do you want to parent? So up arm to what do you want to want to parent it? And that will be the L underscore arm. There you go. Again, let's check it out. We've got an error again. No, I didn't. There it is. Right, it's huge. See it here. We don't want that, so we need to scale it again. Um, where is it? Right there. Yeah. Based on scale, zero point one. 0.1, 0.1, oh, 0.1. What do you want to scale in this case? It's the upper arm. Okay. Like this, right? So now I'm just going to be cheeky. Um, so what we now can also do is just we could again do the uh, based up move, just called base this one. Or since this object is in child of the left arm group, if I do this later, if I move the actual object later, so if, if I first uh, child the actual upper arm to the, to the group and then move that group, then the arm should follow. I hope. It is, right? There it is. So this is a way to save lines of coding, um, because when a child uh, or, or, or when a parent is moved, the, the child will follow, right? So in this case, I move a little bit later. So I first make the upper arm child of the loft of the shoulder of the group here, and then I move the actual group. It's a little bit faster. It will save you a lot of time as well. So we do the same thing here, right? So in between, I'm going to make the actual upper arm. Again, it goes the space locator. The end is uh, lock r group arm. Again, I'm going to scale it. 0.1, 0.1, What do you want to scale? In this case, again, the upper arm. And then I'm going to again parent it, it to the, in this case, the R arm. There you go. And then I move the, again, the actual group itself. Then I got an error again. I made a typo. Space, 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 locator. There it is. There you go. So now the spine, the pelvis, the actual spines, and the upper arm. After this, you can actually do, you can also do the forearms as well if you want to. Um, let's just do, well, let's just do it right. It's a little bit easier. So the upper arm here. So this is the upper arm. I'm going to add comments here. Upper arm, same thing here. Again, since since we're, we're moving the group later, I'm gonna uh, put the, the elbows in front of the actual base out move. Uh, so we only have to do it once. Up arm. Okay, and then we do the elbow here. And then we do the wrist here as well. So it's always the same thing. Um, but in this case, we, we actually need to move the, the elbows afterwards uh, because otherwise it would just be in place of the actual uh, shoulder that kind of weird so we're gonna make an elbow equals base dot space locator it's just the same thing over and over again uh, L elbow again we scale it scale 0.1 0.1 0.1 what do you want to scale we want to scale the elbow there it is and then again based on parent in this case I, I want to it to the upper arm, so in this case, upper arm, like this. Okay, now afterwards, we actually need to move it um, to the actual proper location. So, I'm just gonna go uh, move uh, the elbow. Okay, so based on move again. So where do you want to move it? Well, it should be a little bit to the right, the actual uh, elbow. So it's like maybe 0 0.6 probably. Multiply it by the side again. And then the height, I don't know, let's do 1.4 and 0 on the Z. Which object do you actually want to move? You want to move the elbow. Okay. Let's check it out. Yeah, it actually works. And there it is. Well, it actually looks pretty good. 
Again, we want to do the same thing here, so I'm going to copy this for the other one. Don't have to change anything except for the L into R, and then again we have to move the elbow after we move the actual group. There you go. Now I can do the same thing for the wrist. Right, okay, just there you are. See the hierarchy still holds up? Yep, it does. The cool thing about it is you can just now rotate the entire group, etc. Okay, let's just do one more. Let's do the wrist, and then we're going to do something else. Because this is just this, this is the same thing over and over and over again. It's really not that interesting. Uh, space locator and is point one zero point one zero point one, and then the wrist. And then in this case, we want to parent it to the elbow. elbow. Then again, afterwards, we want to, we want to move it. Uh, so base dot move. Uh, I don't know. Let's do zero point eight times side. Uh, let's do one zero, and then the actual objects. So in this case, wrist. Actually, I'm actually going to offset the elbow a little bit on the Z axis, like 3.2. Because I think that will look much better. Okay. And again, same thing here, we're going to paste it. And R, and then we're going to move it again. There we go. This is the wrist. Wrist. There you go. And let's check it out. See if it's done correctly. Oh, <laughs> shit. Okay, the Z value should be negative, of course. I knew that. Um, this should be negative 0 0.2, and this should also be negative 0 0.2. There you go. The reason why is so you get, you get this nice bend in here. Yep. Okay, so let's do something different. Um, so what I kind of want to do though is that you first have to actually uh, um, change the positions of the actual uh, locators and then when they are perfect then you can hit a button to create the actual joints. So what I want to do is that at first, well I want to be lazy, right? So if I do one side, I also want to move the opposite side to move as well, otherwise you have to do it twice. So then you have to go in here and then move it, and then we get really, conf really complicated and confusing, and if those might not be exactly the same, then everything breaks, so I don't want it, right? So I want to press an actual button that says edit mode, because once you are in edit mode, you can actually just um, take these values and paste them on the other side in the opposite direction. So I want to make a button that says edit mode, They'll save us a lot of well, probably trouble. So let's first dive into a thing called um, variables outside the actual functions. So so far we've only used them inside here. So like for example, the, the root here, this is a variable inside the function called create locators. But you, you can also make one that is for the entire class, right? Just like in any, any language, they're really helpful. So in this case, I'm going to make a boolean so edit mode i'm going to set by default to true so by saying it up here we can always we should be able to use it well in the functions right at least that's what you think it doesn't work like that because you actually have to define it in the functions if if you can use them or not right so in, if, if you want to use them in the arms functions i have to say here uh, global edit mode then i can actually use them right a little bit weird, but that's how it works. But first, I want by default that all the values uh, or, or all the um, locators are locked, right? So you can't actually move them. But now I can still move them, but I want all the values to be locked, so you can't touch them. So how, did, how do you do that? Well, that gets a little bit more complicated, but should be fine, I hope. So we're going to make a function again, and I'm going to call it. Uh, 
lock all or lock everything. Let's get lock all like this and like this, right? And then print something so it doesn't crash. Okay, so this is where it gets complicated, like I just mentioned. Um, first thing, I want to include the global edit mode variable like this. Um, then we can do something else. So you can actually set the um, um, attributes of a object using Python script. Um, so you can say, for example, that, that that the scale on the X should be locked, right? So you can't touch it anymore. But that's a little bit difficult. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to walk you through it. The first thing I want to do is I want to create all the axes that uh, Maya has. So in this case, we're going to say is and then equals and then create a, a square bracket. And then I want to say X. I want to say Y. And I want to say Z. Make sure that they're not in capitals, otherwise it doesn't work. Okay, so the attributes in Maya are called um, T for, for transform, the R for rotate, and the S for scale. Like this, so TRS, right? Okay, so next up is we need to get all the shapes or all the actual objects in our scene. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to do this for different numbers called base.list relatives, like this. So again, we're going to search for everything with lock underscore and then the wildcard, like this. And then I want to say something here that's called all parents is true, right? Oh, capital T, sorry. So what it does, it just gets, it just gets all the actual parents, right? And this is actually really important. It's uh, same graph here, and if we go to my outliner, right, I see it here as well. So, you know, two things, right? And my shape or my object consists of two things the actual object and its shape. And this is really important that you actually get this. So, there's a shape here as well. And, and, and if if you just get all the uh, by default, if you just turn this off like this, you get both the object and the shape, right? But I, I don't care about the shape at this stage at all. Because I mean, locking these, yeah, it's cool, but I, I want to lock these. You see it, right? So if I change this position here, the child doesn't move. If I change this position, the child does move, right? So, so we want to get this object over here, the actual object and not the shape. Which is why we use the all parents is true, right? So it just only gets the actual parents. Okay, so then we're gonna make a couple of for loops. So for, so we're gonna get the the axis for x x in axis. Oh crap. Then we're gonna get the four add in attributes. You can call it anything you want. And then we're gonna get another one for the node in nodes. So this is a loop in a loop in a loop. And then we're gonna set the actual attributes, right? So then we can say base dot set at like this. Okay, then the object, in this case there will be node, right? Plus, and then we're gonna get a dot. So it's like object dot uh, um, rotate, for example. Uh, and then again, plus the add, plus the x, and then say lock is for example false, right? Or lock is true, like this. Okay, let's execute this. See if it actually works. It didn't, because we probably got an error somewhere. One. Makes sense because we didn't call this function yet. I'm so stupid. So let's get this function. Um, well, where do you want to do this? It doesn't really matter where you place this, but I just do it after the last code is being executed, and that would be in this case our lists. So in here, I'm going to say lock all. Create them. And you can see, right? You can't move them anymore. It's perfect. So we actually have so we actually have to push a button before we can move them. So because then we can actually get the value of the movement and then copy paste it to the other side. Uh, that would be perfect, right? So we're gonna make a button. Again, we're gonna make a button here. Let's do below the actual spine count. So again, based on button. Um, this whole should be called L. Is so the text here the edit mode. This is awesome, and the width is 200. And then the command. Oh. So, what, what kind of command are we going to push through here? Now, this is important. Um, 
how you do this, how you approach this, there are multiple ways. But in this case, I'm going to pass through the actual edit mode. So I'm going to say lock all and then the edit mode, right? So, so the actual variable here called edit mode. I might need to move it up a little bit because it probably doesn't recognize it. There we go. So now I have a button called edit mode, perfect. Uh, by default it's set, it's set to true, so in this case we lock it. Let's go down here. We need to set the actual value here, I'm going to say lock. I'm going to paste this with full lock as well. So now when I click it, it's because the, the, by default this one is set to um, true, right? Everything will be locked. But if you press it again, it will be kind of cool if everything would unlock, right? Otherwise, why would you do it? So we're going to do it, make sure that you're not in the for loop indentations, otherwise it gets really weird again. Okay, so we're going to say if the edit mode is false, then, oh, I did it again, edit mode should be true. So, so we're just um, flipping it, right? Else, oh, edit mode should be false like this. See that it works. Locked, unlocked, unlocked, and unlocked. Right, so now I can actually move them. And now I can lock them again. Now I can't move them anymore. Like this. It's perfect. There you go. Okay, so let's just leave it for now for today, because it's probably been a lot. Um so I'm just gonna finish this because then because the hands is just, it's just more copy pasting. It's really not that interesting. It's copy paste. Same for, same for the legs as well. So and hopefully in the next video we can actually start adding in in the joints. So I hope you had. Uh, I hope this was useful. And if you had a little bit of fun, then I'll be very happy. Um, so hopefully um, see you next time.